Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In yesterday's video, we talked about why we are getting rid of our Integra Steam 29V and some of the issues that we had. We didn't want to nitpick, so it's not an extensive list of issues, but it's the main ones that affected us enough that we didn't feel confident in having our RV anymore. Feel free to watch that video if you have not. And this video today is about what we're going with instead. We did put a poll out and asked, what RV manufacturer do you think we're going to go with next? 25% of people said Integra. 17% of people said Tiffin, 6% said Fleetwood, 33 surprisingly <laughs> said Winnebago, and then 19% said other. Some folks had mentioned going with uh, use Prevo, which is actually a, an idea that we've been talking about for a very long time, but the budget's still a little high on those. A, a custom schoolie, which is something that we have done in the past. We tried to do it in the past. Yep, that didn't quite work out. We couldn't get insurance for it before we could get it registered as an RV, and you can't get it registered as an RV until it has meets certain requirements. Requirements, and the spot that we had to actually build it out had fallen through. So if you ever want to know how to take the seats out of a school bus, we do know how to do that. <laughs> I really wish we had our YouTube channel then. I'll tell you that. Boy, it's really been a long journey. I'll tell you. <laughs> Let's go ahead and we'll kind of walk you through our RV shopping process and what we had been looking for ever since being told that really our only option to get out of this unit is to sell it privately or trade it. We did decide to trade it in and not sell it privately because we don't want to pass our problems onto somebody else. We are going to trade it into a dealer and let them deal with it on their end. We are still under warranty and if we were to sell this unit, the warranty would not transfer. So that doesn't seem like the ethical thing to do and knowing that somebody would be investing a lot of money into this unit just as we had done with some confidence not the right move we did decide to look at other motorhomes and we looked at class c's and one thing we realized is that our issue with the over cab area bouncing may potentially be an issue on all of them and we really love the appearance of the class c's i like the thought that it's a truck it's a little bit shorter you get a lot of features in this package they also tend to be a little bit less expensive this was the what we consider the top of the line rv and this is our experience with it so far another thing that we did talk about was going back to a truck and a truck trailer it didn't make sense at the price that trucks cost right now it didn't make sense also we really really like that if we were to be in a situation which we haven't been luckily where we need to move quickly it's an all-in-one unit we don't have to get the dogs out we don't have to take them around to a truck we don't have to load up in a truck and move between two units it's all in one so we really like that about the motorhome style and we did have a truck camper and i actually really loved our truck i think we both really enjoyed our truck camper but for the fact that it's really high up off the ground we've had people that kind of park us in because the, the door is on the rear of the truck camper you basically stepping out onto somebody else's hood that's less than ideal and honestly in the middle of the winter and you got creaky knees and it's the end of the day you don't want to be climbing up into a truck camper that's not our ideal but if we were part-timers or hunters or we had wanted to tow a boat i think that would be the perfect scenario for that yeah day. and i think that just the way we live in rvs like it just didn't work out well for us to have the truck camper it was fine for when we did have it um also getting the dogs in and out of it to like let them out to go to the bathroom and things wasn't wasn't the most fun. And we could have certainly gone with something like a Tab 400 and Toyota 4Runner, for example. We've done the small scamp, loved that, other than the fact that the dogs were just not very comfortable. We also did, you know, the van life thing, and, and we've really looked at all of our general options, and we've found that actually a class a would really be our best bet that's actually something that we never really considered because frankly i didn't really like the appearance of them we i think that there was a point in time where we laughed at the idea of a class a we're like it's too big and it's, it's too much ring yeah so we're eating crow on that one a little bit oh absolutely but you know hey opinions change and tell me you've never been around before apparently i was wrong there's two things that immediately stood out of my mind one the chassis are more rigid more durable and higher strength steel that was a big thing for me they also offer more clearance because they have bigger tires and wheels so that is a huge plus and the fact that it's all one box right there's it's not a cab over and it's not adapting to basically a truck but the entire thing is one box and that includes the driving area which is a significantly more usable from what we're seeing these are our assumptions and we'll see if we have to eat some more crow later on more usable when you park because right now honestly we don't turn the seats around they're a pain in the butt that was a huge perk being I, able to use it i think the other thing that we have found ourselves talking about a lot this summer in particular is how we'd like to have inflatable kayaks or inflatable paddle boards or more outdoor recreation things that we just don't have the outdoor storage for. Yep. And so the big storage base, like basically the basement on the Class A is really enticing for that kind of thing. 
Yeah, once we started looking into it and the, the pros and cons, that was a pretty big thing. But, you know, of course, we're like, I'm like, that's a, that's a big rig, right? They're, I think, one to two feet taller than this. And honestly, like, we've never once been restricted in where we can go with this rig other than we have no clearance. So we start looking into the Integra Class A's because, one, that's a product that we know and we've come to essentially, you know, basically love up to this point. And we were hoping that Jacob would work with us. So with the Integra coaches, you know, they do have the Super C's and those are great, but... I feel like you still, we still may potentially run into some of the same issues. That was one factor. So we start looking at these class A's. Again, if we ignore the diesel models, and I, I like how they call them luxury diesels, but otherwise they're just gas class A's, right? It's kind of funny. So they kind of talk them down a little bit. And they have a Vision, a Vision XL, and an Emblem. And when we started looking at Emblem, it didn't seem like, you know, as we're going through, it didn't seem like we were getting, you got a little bit of a step up, but you got an even bigger step up in price. It didn't, didn't quite sit right, but we we're looking at the Vision XL. I just want to keep in mind that when we start looking at the floor plan something that was really really important to us as it was when we looked at the Integra Steam 29V and made that choice is that we can use the whole RV when the slides are in like that is paramount for us yeah. um, so we automatically ruled out any floor plan where that wasn't the case and and that is that had been actually kind of hard to find is everything including the bed going to be usable and so we're like okay let's let's switch up the layout a little bit and we look at the 34G for example but the fireplace is in the slide as well as the TV. Yep, and the kitchen is also in a slide. And the, the, the kitchen being in a slide just doesn't sit right with me. Propane constantly moving. You know, engineers would probably say it's not a big deal at all, but just my logical brain goes, no, 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 no. And then you got the 36C and the 36A. And when we were looking at the 36A, there was a couple things. There's a 26K chassis, so it's a heavier duty Ford chassis. That's kind of nice. And we were seeing the bunk beds, which originally I was like, no, nah, we don't we don't need bunk beds. What are we gonna do with that? Over time, we started realizing you can actually use these bunk beds for other things. So we have our dogs, for example. That would give them a dedicated space, which is kind of nice. And then, of course, we'd have a, a spot for my guitar, a rifle, fishing poles, hanging clothes, things like that. Extra storage, though, which would be nice. Spoiler alert. There's no baby going up there. <laughs> Not yet. And so it actually took a second to kind of get over the idea that there's two bathrooms in this unit. And I thought about it and I'm like, okay, do we need two bathrooms? Absolutely not. By the way, two bathrooms in a motorhome seems just outrageous, right? There's a lot of adapting that it takes over the course of, of shopping around and looking at your options. Two bathrooms is ridiculous, but you can use one as an office if you want to, or extra hanging storage. Or it could be like a dog wet room. Yep. So we're looking at that and it, as you can see here, basically if you swivel these around, when you close this off, it's basically one big room, right? And it almost extends, right? There's not a visual barrier kind of hanging down where the over cab and the, the truck chassis meet, which is kind of nice. And, and in this unit has a drop down bed. I believe it's optional, but you know, drop all, down bed. It all really feels like part of your living space because you can swivel those chairs around and then you have like a full encompassing like couch chair system. Yep. So one thing that's also really nice about this is that it has the recliners and they are on a slide but everything's usable it, with the slide in. The TV is right here. The TV's not what is essentially right next to you guys. It's right in front of you, which is really nice. So your, your neck's up a little bit, but uh, right behind that, you're also not sacrificing the food storage because it's all on a hinge. So that was kind of a cool thing. We like our counters. They're, they're pretty decent. We like that this unit also had the lighter interior, so it's easier to repair. Although I will say that the farmhouse look just kind of looks a little grungy. It looks a little dirty, but then again... You're probably not gonna make it watch worse. No, and I think that part of that is to disguise some of the dirt that will show on a white cabinet anyways. But we do really like the white and the fresh and the, the bright. And if we look at the fridge, this fridge is just massive. It's an all electric 21 cubic foot residential fridge and it does have an ice maker and a water maker here. That's kind of cool. This is very interesting because this is a, a pinch point, but this is here no matter what, which I can kind of appreciate, right? It's not like it shifts and you're losing anything when the slides are in. You come back here and you do have bunks. That's kind of cool. I, one thing I noticed is that these bunks don't flip out and they don't have any storage below but as, as we're looking we're like oh, okay well i can get used to that we also it also just gives us more storage in general having the bunks there than not if you use it for kids you use it for kids if you don't you have storage right there's no there's no loss there and as you come back it's actually a three slide unit which is just outrageous they, they put a window in here which is nice you got a big old tv there's our bed and it's very kind of identical to what we have right now but it does include a sliding door for the bedroom that's okay right the headboard here is a little bit cheesy i think that's something that you can easily be swapped out they're, they're really sticking with the farm house theme here right which i can appreciate the bathrooms look identical to what we already have right it's 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 something that's very familiar and one thing that i 
really like about this unit structurally is that fiberglass roof. That's a huge selling point. And as we start shopping through and, and just considering like, should we look elsewhere? And especially after Jayco said, hey, basically like you're on your own, it's, it's either get a warranty repaired, come in to Indiana, you know, next year, whenever we can get you in, or you know, basically you're on your own, go sell it. I start looking around and I'm like, that's actually something that's a nice feature to have. It's a really nice peace of mind. Even if functionally, you know, a TPO roof or the like are pretty decent in the real world, the, the idea of fiberglass and the repairability of fiberglass is actually pretty nice. Here's the thing. This layout, I think we both really liked it. Yep. And we're going to use Matt's RV reviews because you just cannot beat his videos. I don't think you can shop without watching his videos anymore. It really was integral in helping us figure out what was going to work for us. Right. And you see this massive window here. You see the three headlights. The front of this unit really looks pretty decent. It's got a big old awning there and you've got big old storage. And one thing I find kind of interesting is having the propane tank and the batteries all in one bay. I, I don't know. That kind of... Mm, little red flag there. And this unit does have 70, 72 gallons. So it's bigger than what we have today. You know, there, there's a lot of pros, but it, then we're, we're thinking about it. We're like, this is not a big enough step up for, for us. We're looking and we're like, yeah, it's, it's good. We have more storage, but then we're also dealing with weird things like having to pump the water in for fresh water fill. You're dealing with a lot of the familiar kind of issues that we could potentially have as well. And also the the, the bay doors are fiberglass where they're, they're not bad. They're very forgiving if something happens to them, but they also don't keep water out nearly as well in our experience or dust. I mean, our bays are full of dust. I'll have to show you guys that at some point. We decided this is a floor plan we really like. Yeah. We decided that we like the light colors on the interior. And we also decided that this feels too much like our Integra Esteem. And if we're going to pay a lot more money for it, mm -hmm. we wanted it to feel like we're making a bigger upgrade. Absolutely. So we did actually sit with the Vision XL 36A as our choice for a week, two weeks? I think it was like two weeks. And we actually put in an order just to get the ball rolling, just yeah. in case. And in hopes that Integra would come around. But they did it. So we're looking and we're like, okay, what are our other options? What are the big names, right? We've got Numar, you got Tiffin, you got Winnebago. And... I'm gonna tell you guys straight up, right off the bat, and if you own a Winnebago, especially an older one, I am not dogging you. I am not dogging your product, and I am certain the Winnebago can make a good product. We hate them every time we have been in a Winnebago. Other than the Echo or their B-Van. Yeah, I think the Bs are their best work, but I think yeah. that like overall, in our opinion, the materials feel a little bit cheaper. Yep. Um, and they always feel really dark and closed in. And dated. And yeah. dated, and so those are the reasons we don't like Winnebago as much as other products. And when we're looking at the build quality with the, the selection of materials, I don't think you're getting what you pay for. That's off the table, I gotta say. So we're looking at Tiffin, right? We're like, oh, that's that's pretty nice. And and what we're finding is that Tiffin and, and the Integra are, their MSRPs are one thing, so you subtract 30% if you go to a dealer that's willing to work with you on price. So take 30% and they're coming in around the same price. And I'm like, all right, let's look at that. Now Tiffin, they have quite a few different models. And we're, again, we're not going diesel. So we've got the Tiffin Open Road Allegro. And we're gonna select that. There's a a lot to love about this. There were two things that we really didn't. There was only two reasons we didn't select the Tiffin as the next unit. And again, this is all personal preference, right? And, and if you pick a different unit, not dogging you, everybody has different styles. They do have a floor plan that matches the Vision 36A with the bunk beds. Which is a 36 UA. And you can see in here, you step in and you've got two bathrooms, but it's actually the opposite side. So that's actually the roadside on that big slide. But one big difference is that this unit only has two slides versus three. And again, if you watch that last Last video you'll probably learn that we are not huge fans of slides especially being that we use our rig 99% of the time with the slides in. One less slide to have to potentially fix in the future. It's really nice because on their site, you can actually do a 3D tour here. So let's go ahead and do that 3D space. I center this unit. We're looking at this and it's a nice looking unit. Like it looks like a high quality cabinetry and we've been in a Tiffin before. And it's one of those things that it, the ones that we've been in kind of felt a little dated, but the material seemed really decent quality. I'm going to have to start doing videos with you guys that, that show us going around and touching things i'm gonna have to get a microphone because that is what we do that is how i figure out like is this a good unit or is this a bad unit if you if you tap on something and it feels hollow is that gonna hold up no no be, probably not be looking for joel's auxiliary rv asmr channel coming mm -hmm. soon auto sensory <laughs> meridian response so we're looking at this and i'm like this layout could really really work but there were a couple of things what did you say when i sent this to you i said it was very very ugly i'm not a fan of the light natural wood that's the blonde wood the blonde wood that's all over this thing um mm -hmm. i said we'd probably paint it i'd probably paint it within the first we're learning don't do that unless you love it and uh -huh. you're not gonna get rid of it yeah don't paint it 
Um, yep. Also, the cushions are tan. I'm not a fan of that. Yep. And like, everything's just so beige and tan. And so I was like, I hate the color of it. Personal preference again, but. La Mesa RV did have a really good deal on a 2022. And I don't care what year it is, as long as it's a good price and it gives us everything that we need. And we like the unit. Now, they had a 2023, I think it was $30,000 more. And that one actually had a white interior, which was great. But she liked that one. I didn't like the price increase simply because of the year. Yeah. And then I looked at the outside. One of the things that we didn't like about the Integra was the paint manufacturer that they go with. They don't prepare the unit properly. It's pretty consistent. We're seeing plenty of issues with these. I didn't trust their full body paint. Tiffin, however, appears to own their own factory for paint. I believe they invested a lot of money in getting the paint just right. But I mean, their colors are pretty, pretty bad. You know, but some of these you can live with, right? This dark black gray, uh, dark gray one, pretty decent. But the face of these are just hideous. And as a matter of fact, from the profile here, it's weird because you got a big old windshield. That's pretty typical, right? And this is, again, this is nitpicky, but this is, these are the things that I look at. We're coming down and then all of a sudden you got the headlights that come in and they're, they're kind of a kind of Honda Accord shaped, right? Like it's a very interesting thing here. The very sharp headlights, they, they're swooping in just like the swoops that I think are ugly on the side of RVs. And then the bumper juts out a little bit, then comes back in farther than the windshield inwards and then it goes back out it's got a little tiny goatee here that is my big issue with the exterior i think they're a wonderful motorhome but they don't give you the option in the the appearance of the face and they haven't changed that appearance in a long time it may seem very small and trivial to some people but if you've got to look at that motorhome every day and you're coming home to it and you don't like the way it looks i'm sorry it's a pass it's a pass right yeah i would not live in a hot pink motorhome for example something important to add is like i said before i'm not a fan of the beige rv so some of these come with nice full paints but a lot of them come in a beige color which right. doesn't make a lot of sense to me why a lot of these options are beige we also were limited in our color choices but again a very nitpicky and i do think that they're they're designing these for a certain buyer and that's just not us and there's nothing wrong with that right. I, and that's i think that a lot of these are just beautiful they're just they, not for me they look really nice they're just not our choice right and but if you look at like the allegro reds and things like that they have a very similar but slightly better face i see every car as a face <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a, like the, the Mazda Miata is my very favorite de car design because every time it looks at you, it looks like it's smiling or it looks like it's angrily smiling depending on the year of the unit. As you go up in price, it does seem like you go up in style, but it's not our style. So moving on. Then we briefly looked at Numar and I think that Numar, I've never heard anybody say anything bad about Numar and they've got a lot of options here, but we're looking at the gas line up here. So we're going to go to the base star and they have a base star and a base star sport. I think the sport is like the more price point unit. I mean, we're kind of learning that in a lot of these ways, you get what you pay for, right? We're looking at the layouts here and they have a 3616. That layout does have bunks, drawers below. The bathrooms are pretty similar, right? Again, I don't know why, but now all of a sudden we're looking at two bathrooms. They're like, well, we're going to get what we what we want, right? That's actually a bath and a half though. That is a pretty significant thing. And it does have two slides. So that's kind of a bonus. When we're looking at the basics of design, we both hated paint colors that they offer and they might look a little different in person. And I really am not a big fan of the grill either, but it is a little better than the Tiffin, I think. Yeah, I also, we didn't like the wood choice. So the light wood, right. wood interior is actually like a creamy color. It's not actual white and it looks- Arctic glazed, yeah. Arctic glazed, yeah, it looks more like cream than it does white and it's just not my choice. Right, and and they also, of course, they have interior fabrics and you can change some fabrics out, but the idea is that we get what we want, not have to change it immediately. And so when we were looking at the new Mars, the things that kind of really ruled it out for us were it's one and a half baths instead of two, which isn't that big of a deal. It's still more bathroom than you normally get. But also if we're gonna be able to get two bathrooms in the same layout at a different company, then why not? For a similar price. Yeah, yep. for a similar price. Also the paint color on the exterior and the wood on the interior just were not our jams. No, and when we did the 3D Tour, which by the way, I think this is one of the best things that RV manufacturers can do. I also wish they would add like storage dimensions and things like that, which I understand can be difficult, but they, some, of them, nice thing. some of them do have that like tape measure feature mm -hmm. and where you can like measure. On the 3D, yeah. And it would be nice though if the entire model included the exterior as well, but you know, I'll take what I can get. But when we're 
looking at this and I understand what they're going for here, but honestly, and I'm gonna be very crude here and, and people don't like the way I speak sometimes, it's butt ugly. It is butt ugly. Like, let's, let's just get a little nitpicky for here for a second. So one thing I think they did well, of course, is this this dash, like the, everything's kind of facing the, the driver, but they added this interesting plastic wood insert into this plastic dash, whatever. I think the ribs that go all the way down, I don't love them. I just don't. We're looking at this texture up here. I don't know what, what is this diamond pattern? Like what, are we in a Las Vegas hotel? Not my preference. I'm looking at this counter. I'm sure, I hope that the cabinetry is pretty good, but I did, wouldn't expect it to be as nice as the diesel because again, these are price point gasoline units, right? Couch is hideous. You know, I like the pocket door here. You're looking at a smaller fridge here, which might be more energy efficient, but you know, compared to the other offerings and much like the Tiffin, it actually included carpet here. And I'm not a, I'm just not a big fan. And I understand that's an easy way to resolve that problem. And it may potentially hold out drafts, but is there a better way to do it? That's a little bit more durable. Here's the real kicker for me. This shower is a two piece plasticky shower. I do think is an upgrade over what we have right now. We have a two piece shower that's functional, but it's, uh, it's kind of ugly, right? It just doesn't feel like you're getting a, 200 plus thousand msrp motorhome right. that's just me it's right. ugly it's ugly i'm back and forth on this sink here uh oh, I hate it. yeah yeah not a mm, yeah that's the new mart i'm sorry i i do think they have a they make some wonderful coaches that's not our choice now the next thing is the fleetwood products and i had not really ever considered them but i i gotta say when i think of a motorhome and i think of a class a motorhome honestly i think of a, a fleetwood product and we've seen fleetwoods and you think of the older ones and we still see them driving around today the old ones are butt ugly like let's be real they are ugly honestly they're still kicking i follow including dave's rv life he actually had one of the older what i would consider ugliest drivers <laughs> ever that's the motorhome and fleetwood is actually one of the older brands that is still around kicking here today. And they were the first one, I believe, to have the under storage the way that we know it today. I think that's really kind of cool. I'm looking at them, I'm like, we've got to consider whatever our options are. And they've got a lot of different units here. Like, I, I love their Discovery. We saw a Discovery at a rest area, and I fell in love. That thing was gorgeous. And that's well out of our budget. I am a teacher after all. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're looking at their gas lineup. One thing that I thought was kind of interesting is that on their website, it's actually really tough to tell. Like, where's the, if you're going tier one, two, three, four, five, where's the tier one? Where's the tier five, right? So with Fleetwood, it looks like the South one is actually their top tier and the founder is there kind of just below that. The difference between a little bit of chrome and such. So looking at the pounder, because that's just, those are nice rigs. Those are really nice that rigs. That is B-class A. Eh? We're looking at it, I'm like, okay, it looks okay, right? And we're watching a bunch of Matt's RV review videos and they have a lot to offer. They do have some colors that are not quite as offensive at all. You know, we're looking at grays, whites, blues. That's really nice. If we go through their lineup for floor plans, they actually have a 36F and I'm looking at this. So one full wall slide, that's pretty nice. I'm a little skeptical, but uh, one of the big things is the way that they run that slide. They actually, they run the bars for the slide through the frame and there's three of those arms and if you need to override that there's you can grab a drill and you can actually work each of the three motors until the slide is all the way in being able to override it is a huge thing for me so okay well that's one thing that like all right we can, we can work with that and we do have another slide as well but it looks like that slide is on the bed the bed is completely usable with a slide in when we're going through here i'm looking at their white interior option and it looks a lot nicer than any of the other bright or white interiors that we're seeing on anything else. It's really pretty. Their backsplash goes all the way around that window, which is wonderful. Their windows are really nice. And you can see here, the bunks do come in a little bit and it does get a little narrow in that hallway, but it's definitely not something that we can't get used to. So there's an extra TV in there that we probably want to take out. The bed is fully functional. So we also have, you know, the two baths. So we, we can work with that, right? Like this is certainly something we can work with. And when you open the slide up, it's a really great layout. It's very open, but mm -hmm. also the bedroom really feels like you have some privacy there. The furniture is much higher quality. It really feels like we're getting an upgrade because we are mm -hmm. getting what we wanted plus some extra, like the tile backsplash, like yep. the fireplace. The um, fireplace is a big one and the TV being right above that fireplace right in front of you. Right, like the aluminum slam latch doors. Like mm -hmm. everything feels a little bit more than it does in the Vision. Actually, if we go outside because that's what I care a lot about, you do have much bigger bays and a lot more storage, which that's all right. Like that's that's uh, that's hard to complain about more storage. But yeah, we it has every one of the features that we're looking at. The colors are pretty darn good. There is the very fact that it doesn't have a fiberglass roof. They do have a fiberglass roof on the Discovery. So we've 
actually reached out to Rev Group, who owns Fleetwood, and asked them, like, is that a price point thing? Is there a reason? How do we maintain this? These sorts of questions. So if we do hear back, we'll definitely let you know. Other little tiny thing that I think is really nice is that this floor plan does throw in a pantry right there at the front next to the mm -hmm. dinette. So you still get the big fridge and the pantry, um, yeah. which is, it's really nice have both. We wanted to continue shopping, right? Because you want to do all the research that you can. And by no means was our list exhaustive. But one thing that kept coming to mind was the Breaking Bad powder, which, by the way, they actually have one of these at the RV Manufactured Home Hall of Fame in Elkhart. Really cool place. I've been there, I think, four times. You've been there three times with me? Mm -hmm. Every single time that we're going through the middle of the country, we're going back there. I love that place. I love RVs. So they have a really well-preserved unit there. That's the powder name, right? So there's the pros of like, you know, hey, this is this is the motorhome, but there's also the fact that, you know, Breaking Bad, right? And I am a bald guy with a beard and glasses, right? Like, <laughs> I'm going to look Walter White if... Ugh. I think the other thing, too, is the way that we're living right now and we're boondocking in the same area over and over again, and it is a little bit nicer area of Washington. Presentation matters. Yeah. And so... If the name association is Bounder Breaking Bad Meth Lab, we don't yep. really want that association, even if that's not the case at all for us. Right, even if it's just an inkling in the back of their head. One thing, though, that we found very interesting is there's actually another brand within the same group, and it's their sister products, and this is a way for Rev Group to actually sell the same product in the same region at different dealerships, so they're not competing, you know, Fleetwood Fleetwood, you're competing Fleetwood to Holiday Rambler. They're otherwise identical, other than the face. With that, there's the Vacationer. So the Vacationer and the Batter are about the same trim. Kind of just like the Jayco and the Integra products. Greyhawk versus the Esteem. Comparing side by side, I actually really liked the grill and the face, the face, so-called, of uh, the Vacationer significantly more. Like, it just seems a little simpler. It was a little more aesthetically pleasing than the founder was there's also not the of course the name association which is so superficial I mean, we could totally tape that off and whatever right. but and so when we're looking at that we're looking at the exterior that's kind of the first option between all of these we're really looking at the maverick and it's because it's kind of a it's a it's a darker which seems a little fancier lower contrast unit as compared to something like the viper where the blue really punches you in the face and then of course the 36 f plan the layout is identical and in fact if you go side by side with these websites like they're pretty similar but when we're looking at the uh, interior photos one thing that we found kind of interesting is that they all look pretty dark and i'm like hold on so are they just dark and it really here we're looking at a lot more yellow of an image and it wasn't terribly appealing so we go to the decor and i'm like these are some nice options right we really like the genesis the minerals a little too simple the moonscapes a little dark the genesis really stood out it looks beautiful it really matches the nice dark blue exterior and then we look at the cabinetry options and fossil and summit ash are the two that we really like they're really nice and bright and that is what we had seen in the the matt's rv review video if you look in there there's enough windows open enough and the cabinetry is bright enough so it's both an option on the bounder and the holiday railway we really like that like joel said it's identical to the bounder so looking at that white cabinets and things in the bounder video really gives us a good idea of what it looks like in the holiday rambler but there are a couple of things to note here. Now, the hide aloft bed, by the way, is a $4,800 MSRP option. Nobody pays MSRP. You don't pay MSRP. Well, we figured, okay, well, we're going to order it with that bed if we decide to order this. And you look up here, and one, one thing that's really interesting is that there's actually cabinetry here along the back and the front. There's a TV up there as well. There's integrated lighting here. And that's just something that when you're looking up in the same area on the Integra Vision, you're getting soft materials here. You do have cabinetry that would be very difficult to access when the bed is down these types of things right and you do get one light here it just feels a little bit nicer right the underside is nice and bright big windshield of course big windows from what we've been observing from these review videos because we have not seen anybody that actually owns one of these do a review we're seeing that the the chairs are really comfy it's easy to swivel around and there's actually a table that you can put in between one thing that i especially liked is they actually do have that secondary screen where you can show just the rear left right or all three that's kind of a nice thing visible Ability from what we've seen is actually supposed to be better than what we're seeing in this class C because you don't have to look back and around things. That's kind of nice. We'll find out if that's true and we'll do some driving videos. And this really stood out to both of us, I think. With our Integra Steam, when you want to close the shade on the window, you actually have to open the door, get out, close the screen door, go up, pull down the shade, then close the screen door and then close the door all together. But in this unit, there's actually a pull down blackout shade 
inside under a valance like you would do on a regular window inside. Mm -hmm. So you get the window and you get the privacy and you, you can just peek out and put it back. You don't have to try to reach through a screen in order to get to it. So that's actually a really nice thing. It's subtle, but it's nice. I think one thing that also stood out to me in the Holiday Rambler and the Bounder compared to the Vision XL is that the kitchen backsplash, they didn't scrimp on it. And it's one thing that really bothers me is when the backsplash does not cover the whole kitchen mm -hmm. or like go all the way up to the bottom of the cabinetry. Like they really did a nice job with the backsplash. And I think it's real tile yeah. compared to the vision where they just a little strip on the stove. And that really annoys me. We're comparing these like that is, that's pathetic. You might as well not put anything in there because once you lift that glass cover, you're basically avoiding the backsplash it's just gonna go right into the wall anyways. And that's one thing that I legitimately would change probably within the first month of having the RV. Right, these are all the little tick, 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 ticks that we're looking at and we're like, wow, that's a, uh, hmm, hmm. Well, are we getting what we're paying for? And we're watching a ton of videos. And one thing, Matt's RV Reviews did an incredible video tour. You're gonna wanna look at both the Fleetwood and that holiday because they're identical interiors, as well as Fleetwood themselves. They have a, a factory rep that had done both models. You know, sometimes you have to use your imagination, but you can find the color combination that you're looking for out there. Right. They did an incredible in-depth review. We're looking at all these little things and you're listening, right? I'm listening with headphones on, how does that, how does that sound, right? Do you hear a little bit of a rattle when that door closes or is that a solid door? Little things like that. Now, so there's the same convection microwave, it looks like. No oven in this unit, but honestly, every unit that we get that has an oven, we just don't use it. We use it like maybe once or twice, but we're kind of at the point where if we need an oven, we have family we can go and hang out with and use their oven. Yeah, if it's once in six years that we're gonna use it, I don't think it's, I think we'd rather have the storage. But also you have a massive fridge. This is an all electric fridge that I'll be an interesting detail to work with because this electric propane fridge is extremely power hungry on electric, but we've heard that the 120 household fridges are very different. So we're gonna have a review for that and we will figure out a solution. One thing that also stood out to me is these floors are beautiful. And unlike with traditional flooring and especially with these products, they have all sorts of issues. But unlike with most of these floors where they go north, south, these guys actually went at about a 45 degree angle. It makes the space just feel different. That makes it feel a lot more unique. I think they did a really fantastic job with that. I think it takes the shortest part of the RV, which would be the width, and it elongates it a little, a little bit. bit to the eye instead of going up and down the longest part. While not shortening how long the motorhome feels on the inside, the dinette, which we've historically not been a fan of, people have given really good reviews and I've, I've read on forums. They've said it's actually really comfortable. The, our dinette had really hurt my back when I'm sitting there for nine hours a day. That's pretty bad. So we're gonna find out with that. And I've also seen it's really easy to put down. You can actually just pull a lever, push it down versus having to mess with individual cushions. So kind of a convenient thing, although in fairness, we've never done it. There's also drawers underneath of the dinette yes. seats, which are, is like gonna be really nice for like dog stuff. Common, common sense. Ah, the loungers are supposed to be a lot nicer than what we had. Ours were, that were in here, were not bad. They definitely were not bad. They also weren't great. There was a lot of room for improvement and that also had begun to, to actually hurt just above my tailbone, probably about three inches up. Began to hurt that part of my back. You can actually kind of start to feel the metal, like the metal Sweet. joints yeah. kind of poking up through. There just wasn't a lot of cushion on top of them. No, and so it, it, I still, like, I think about it, I'm like, God, should we have swapped materials? Probably not, but the reality is like, it wasn't functional as it was. We're, we tried and it didn't quite work. And we figured we could always buy our RV recliners if, if we wanted to. Right, well, or like we were very happy with the rig all together as a whole. And so we did not foresee ourselves trading out of it. So we didn't really right. think that that was gonna be a factor when we ripped the couch and dinette out. Sure did not, so. We did keep a lot of the pieces of the dinette though that we will just put back in here when we do trade it in. The cushions and such, yeah. So these ones are supposedly a lot better. Now everybody's body is a little bit different, but we'll find out if these are uh, lazy boy comfortable or not. And supposedly you can also kick the footrest out while the slide is in, so that's nice. It also has a fireplace. Now will we ever use that? Probably not, but. In the winter, it'll be nice. If we do have hookups, like that'll be a really nice thing. They also put a big TV right in your face. Perfect position there, a lot of cabinetry. And this is interesting because these bunks, not only do they have storage just underneath with those drawers that we were not seeing in every unit that we were investigating. The top bunk flips up. That's a really nice thing. There's also windows in both of them, of course. And they already included a closet rod, knowing that some people are probably gonna wanna flip these up. So we can hang clothes in there. It, again, we've got storage for all of our, our items and the dogs will have their own spot. They also have really strong magnets on these doors, which pros and cons, right? But mm -hmm. it, there's 
still accessible with a slide in. Uh, there's an extra TV here that we're like, uh, I don't know about that, but easy to remove. Well, an extra storage there also. One thing that even just from the bedroom position, like this is a huge, huge RV, but we're 32 and a half feet here. These are about 38, 39 feet total. So it won't be that much bigger, but it's probably going to feel significantly bigger. And I'll show you why. Well, and it's also shorter than our, like our Airstream and our truck was, for example, still. Right. I think that was over 40 feet with a, yeah, because yeah. we had the long bed, which yep. is worth it. So we are looking at a sliding door and it's a kind of nice because with a sliding door, even with a, whether it slides out or in, you're still going to be able to use that. Whether we use it or not, this is a completely different thing. One of the things that I think they did just wonderful on is they took a, what would otherwise be a really ugly wall. They broke it up a little bit, right? And uh, I think George's Odyssey 30Z also does this. Have a nice way and of course you have your TV, you have a storage behind that TV, plenty of drawers. I don't think we're ever going to have an issue there. There's a little bit of uh, carpet in here, but not too, not too big of a deal. It's a lot smaller and it's in the in the bedroom but one thing that i'm actually noticing here that i wasn't seeing in any of the other rigs really that we were looking at is crown molding and that really sets it off because we actually have a bit of this material this vinyl material that is actually poking out i think we have it here and then we have it once out there where it just kind of becomes untucked in the ceiling on the edges yeah even if they didn't do a perfect job getting that that all squared up and tucked away this is going to keep that a little bit tidier and it also gives it kind of that complete look. That's a real nice thing and, and I really appreciated seeing that all the way along this wall, all the way to the back and the other side, right? They didn't really skip. It just, it just feels nice. One thing that we don't really love in this rig that we're actually saying in the vacationer is that you do have the valance on top, but you also have the valances on the side and that helps with, you get a gush of wind, right? It's going to push the blind open, but here nobody can see in even momentarily. It also will help with drafts, which is great. And a lot of these blinds are, are, there's a day privacy shade and a night shade. So it's kind of a nice feature if you're paying for it anyways. I think, yeah, I think it just helps with light leak all together, having those balances all the way around. Looking around, it looks like there's a really smart placement of 110 and USB outlets, which is nice. Having built-in USB outlets is just, I mean, you can do it yourself. Like you can certainly do it yourself, right? But if we're buying a rig, isn't it nice to have that to begin with? Just to touch on the bathrooms real quick, we're looking at the mid bath here. One thing I noticed right offhand, the shower is a little bit more narrow. Like it's uh, it's not as deep, but it's decently wide enough. But it's actually an all one piece fiberglass shower, which that just looks a little bit nicer. It's one less place for mold and, and crud to get into. It's a little bit wider than I would I would at all expect, but there is a porcelain toilet, so you're not sacrificing there, right? They used a little bit of material to cover up the piping that goes to the shower and the, the toilet, which is fantastic, right? And they made that functional. They didn't have to. And the other thing that's a very nuanced kind of small detail here is that this has a glazed textured semi-opaque window in that shower rather than the clear glass, which does just look a little scummy over time, right? You get a little bit of a soap on there and it's going to add up. And we squeegee and squeegee and squeegee. And unless you're really digging in and scrubbing it, and who wants to do that, right? Nobody wants to. So that's nice. Now that's just one bathroom, right? One thing that is really nice in here is that the slides being on opposite sides means that no matter which way we're facing, we're going to be able to put our slide out if we really want to. Where we are here, we have these trees on this side. We can put the slide out and into the trees a little bit, and that's not a big deal. Or if we're facing the other way, we can put the bigger slide out. That's really nice. Whereas right now, both of our slides are on the driver's side. So we actually have to be facing the wrong way to put any of our slides. And then we go all the way through. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, that's a king bed. Then we're looking here we've got the same but slightly bigger shower in the back it does have its own skylight and a seat which is kind of cool it does have a grab handle that's nice so shower checks out the toilet is identical and again they used a little bit of that material to cover up you have the option for a washer dryer combo back here with a nice big desk that's where i would want to be doing laundry right and folding laundry it has a window in there it already has a built-in toilet paper holder going back to the washer and dryer closet here in the back bathroom you don't have to get the washer and dryer in there it's just an option and so that's another place where like it's a really easy spot to throw a laundry basket in there and it's a spot to put your dirty clothes like super right. easy out of the way get rid of those smells right right by the shower this is a pretty great layout if you want all that light and of course if you got this big huge window so i love the window that we have in our steam right now big beautiful it lets in a ton of light but here 
You have an even bigger one piece window. There's not that division in the center there. That's kind of a nice thing. And that's just something that you get with the class A's. But also when we're looking at overall material and design, one of the things that our rig is really missing is fans. Not only did they put, it looks like fantastic fans in here, which it really doesn't matter which brand. They're not putting the crappy fans where they have your vent opening is this big and your fan is like this big. They've got not just one, but they actually have three. So one in either bathroom and then one in your kitchen. So these are the places that are going to create the most amount of condensation and, and moisture in the air. That's just smart, but it gets better. I have never seen another manufacturer do this until you're buying like their high-end diesels. They have built-in rain covers. I believe they're the fantastic vent covers, but come on, that is just, I mean, that's just a small convenience. Can you do it yourself? Absolutely. But when you're paying these prices, should you have to do it yourself? I don't think so. And I don't think that's spoiled. This is hard earned money you're spending. If you're buying something brand new, you expect it to be usable out of the box. And this is something that's usable from the day that you buy it. And honestly, we've installed our Max Air Fan with the built-in cover. We have not closed that cover one minute. That's a really nice thing. Now, the other thing is it does have a TPO roof and we've been doing a lot of research into it. And, I, and from what I understand, the, the one nice thing is it's a little bit more flexible. It's a little bit more potentially forgiving, right? It's not gonna wrinkle up and then stay up or you know it's not gonna crack. But but repairs on it theoretically are a lot easier, right? So repair the area, clear it, throw some return about tape down, off you go. The roofs themselves are potentially less expensive to replace, which is something that I don't even want to think about buying a new motorhome. I was like, well, <laughs> do I have to replace this roof already? It sounds like they're decently durable. If you do have to replace it, it's pretty inexpensive. As long as you clean it and wax it and maintain it like we would with this fiberglass roof anyways, we're going to be in pretty good shape. Now, the other thing is that we cover our roof with solar panels. So my big thing is I'm thinking, what if we nick it on a branch or you know something like that it hits our solar panels and we don't have to worry about that one bit. So as long as you maintain it and we are up there you know at least once a month i don't know how many times i've been up on our roof we're maintaining it we're using the decor making sure there's no cracks in our ceiling I, from what i understand it's going to be a pretty pretty durable roof it's not the optimal material in my opinion but for everything else that you get that's pretty decent i'm thinking okay well what about the paint are they lacking in the paint but the interesting thing is where integra and jaco and a lot of manufacturers send their paint out to a third-party contractor i did find out that any rev group product they actually have an entire wing of their factory just dedicated to paint and that's all they do all day that's a little reassuring right because then we have one company that we can go to for those things and say you guys screwed this up or hey you guys did a fantastic job right that's a big deal and i'm like okay that paint is kind of nice now some of the options the hide aloft bed it's one of those things that you might as well just get it right you can always remove it if you really want to but get it do it right the first time you can't add it in later right it'd be a pain it sounds like it'd be a pain the power recliner seats that sounds like a nice thing to have but a big one and this is a comparison and something that the Integra did not offer up. What about the suspension? Now our suspension is terrible. It is terrible in this rig and it's really low to the ground, of course. That's all class C's. Yes, people can adapt them. You can adapt them. I'm not a mechanic though, and honestly, it starts to get expensive. You're looking at like 10 grand in upgrades, from what I can tell, before you really like the way your motorhome rides. We had seen an option, and I did a lot of research, and it's called Liquid Springs. Fleetwood is one of the only manufacturers that, that actually includes this as an option from the get. You can actually order it with this option, and the MSRP on this unit is like, 30 grand, but again, nobody pays MSRP, thank goodness. But what this does is it replaces every bit of suspension, right? Your leaves, shocks, all that good stuff. And it's adaptable. So you actually have three different modes. So you have normal, sport, and comfort. And it's a silicone liquid that doesn't require any maintenance, theoretically. You do wanna, of course, like with anything, keep an eye on it, make sure that there's no leaks or something like that. It adapts to the way that you drive. And I've watched a lot of objective and not so objective reviews of this unit. People say it's fantastic. It's the closest that you can get to a diesel motorhome and a gas motorhome ride quality wise at least that's pretty nice i'd say so it was a it's a little bit of a pricier upgrade we're looking at what is it going to be with this option and without and it's well less than thirty thousand dollars of course and we're getting a 30 percent discount it's right on the 30 percent mark maybe a little bit more than that which is really nice right they're not charging msrp which is wildly inflated because if you look at the msrp of this unit we're not touching that so we're at a point where at the price point is about the same for the vision and for the holiday rambler mm -hmm. and the holiday rambler feels like we just get so much more right including uh, the option for a much better ride right yeah and the upgrades and the paint High and quality. The, motor, yep. the quality the finishes all of that the yep. only thing that's really missing is that roof piece which we're willing to forgive for all the other things so we chose to go with the holiday rambler vacationer 36f 
it is a lot of rig. It's going to be a bigger rig. But I think that's one of the things is that uh, I'm actually really excited for. Because this, it will be the biggest all-in-one unit that we've had. Yeah. Probably, the, hopefully, fingers crossed, the nicest unit that we have. And if all goes well, the last motorhome that we buy before we go and build something ourselves. And I think that it allows us to not support a company that didn't want to support us as customers. That is a huge thing, right? We touched on this a little bit yesterday. Whatever we live in, we don't, we're ambassadors for it, whether we want to be or not. If we're out here having fun and living our life and just enjoying everything that we love about RVing and we're doing it in this rig because this is what we picked, it must be working for us, right? And life is too short to be in something that you hate, right? <laughs> so people assume that you love your rig. That is the thing is that I don't feel objectively like we were taken care of the way that I would really hope that we would be or any customer would be. Why would we do the exact same thing over again? knowing the results. Getting support for this, warranty support for this has been terrible. It has been quite frankly terrible. That is one of the questions I'd asked Rev Group when I reached out to them. And I said, hey, like, what are we looking at support wise? Like, is this something we should just expect or should we just create an appointment? in advance at your guys' factory. And I think honestly, that's probably what we're gonna do because there's I, we haven't seen much in the way of support for Holiday Rambler or Fleetwood out here, but at least we will know that going in. Right, and I and I just think like the adage, vote with your money. Yeah, uh, um, yep. Like we are not going to vote for spending more of our money for the company that we don't feel is gonna do right by us anymore. So we're gonna vote somewhere else. 100%. And we're really excited about it. There was one funny little quirky rig that we saw at the local RV show that we did not show in our video. And that was the Forest River Georgetown GT7. And I'm looking at this rig, we walked in and I'm like, whoa, because frankly, I don't like Forest River as a company. I, I just, I don't like them as a company. That's, I think Thor is one thing, everybody has different opinions on Thor. Personally, I, my opinion is not really negative. For example, Thor owns Airstream and I have my opinions about Airstream, but I do think they're one of the highest quality units out there. They're not the rig for us and then they're not what I would pay for full time. But Forest River, in my opinion, every single Forest River product other than the Geo Pro and E Pro, they're usually, well, they're hot garbage. Uh, pardon my language. We walked into this Georgetown 7 and I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, Joel's reaction was wow. Wow, wow, yeah, it really stood out. And it's on, it's on a 26K chassis. And I didn't love the interior color choices and the decor options. And so like, that was like my thing. Right. But there were some practical issues in terms of floor plan and things like that, that we found. Right. And I, and I think there was a couple of things that did really well. For example, their bathrooms are amazing. I mean, they're really nice bathrooms. It blew me away. And I, I'm a huge skeptic of Forest River. I mean, they're using the Corian countertops here. They're really spacious. They have a really nice rear window that unfortunately we're just not seeing with most of these layouts like we're looking at. They do have the bunk beds in this model, plenty of storage, real nice big tilting bed, lift up bunks. The cushions were pretty nice. They even had USBs, heat massage, all that good stuff. Beautiful exterior paint, although the paint did look a little iffy, but it was beautiful up front, right? Just like ours. And the dashboard seemed pretty nice. The visibility was really nice. But there were a couple of things that stood out. Like, for example, one, the unit that we had gone to, into, those floors were hideous. Yes. They were bad. They were bad. There's too much texture. And it was, I think it was similar to this. But in person, it looks even more high contrast. It was just, it was nuts. They had those <laughs> beige ca cabinets that I didn't like in the no. other one that we talked pointed it out in. And a lot of them are glossy, right? And that's a personal preference. I'm not a fan of the glossy. I don't think it makes anything look better because you're just gonna attract fingerprints, which looks worse. They did the half backsplash, which I hate, but they also did it in real tile. So it's not something you could just swap out easily. Right. Um, and the bed is not usable when the slide is in. That is, that was the, uh, that was the real pinch point here because when you put those slides in, you have to have the bed up. <laughs> we were chatting with a dealer, you know, just getting some information from a nice enough guy, right? And he's just doing his job, but he goes, well, you know, Honestly, at, at this point, like, do you guys really need to sleep together? Or like, one of you guys, <laughs> and I, I, I don't, he was like half joking, half not. And he goes, you know, one of you guys could lay north south on the bed and the other one could use the bunk or, you know, there is a drop down high loft bed. And I'm like, what? He was dead serious too. <laughs> He's like, you know, once you get older, it won't matter. We're like one of our values in our relationship is that we should sleep in the same bed. That was a little wonky. I was, uh, but no, they did. I, I will say it's a pretty decent rig. I think they have a couple design choices they could they could do a little differently in this. And the colors just really popped. And he had it at a price that was pretty like it was enticing. A, it was a 2022 model as well. Yeah, so brand new 22, so. They did have that electric blue on the outside though. Yep, and then the one advantage to buying that unit would have been they would support us locally. And it was available right then. Yeah, absolutely. 
But if you've been watching our channel for quite a while, I think that we value things a little bit differently than others. So I'm not one of those people that I have to have it now. I'm okay waiting to make sure that I get the right product that's going to last a little longer. And this, it, it was a step up from the other Georgetowns that we've seen, honestly, which look like rolling garbage. But it didn't, it looked like, yes, you're gonna get the support but you're also gonna need that support more, so. And I will say, I think one big upside to the white is that if you get it nicked or you, you know, you scuff it or you gotta repair, you know, there's nothing worse than you pull a panel off and something goes a little wonky and then you put it back on and it's, you're showing like the light wood underneath that, the darker finish, and then you can't quite touch it up correctly. Right. Well, with a white, you can touch it up. Right. And with this, it was, you know, it's the same thing we're looking at right now. So yeah, pros and cons. I just thought that was kind of an honorable mention. Uh, <laughs> But this is, these yeah. are the conversations that we have as we were shopping for RVs and as we watch video, like review videos of RVs, these are the things we talk about um, and how they're, how they're used and how people can live in them functionally. Um, Absolutely. And it came down to pivotal things for us in making a decision on which RV we wanted to go with next. Yep. Now we're currently in the buying and ordering process. So we originally went to Gabe at La Mesa RV, incredible guy, cannot say enough great things about him, but he sells Fleetwoods and we were, we, you know, we settled on that Holiday Rambler. It's just the face is a little different, of course, and the, the colors are just right. They're just perfect. And he completely understood. Uh, we've had a bit of a rocky time getting our order placed, and we eventually did get an order placed with some really great managers, it seems, uh, down in Tucson, Arizona. So, La uh, Mesa, Tucson. Yeah. That, so, Gabe connected us with La Mesa, Tucson, because they can't sell the Holiday Ramblers, and the managers were able to make it, get, get, make it happen for us down there. Yep. So, that's where we're at right now. And we have heard a wild range of ETAs. Anywhere between Christmas and March. So we've heard nine months and then we heard eight weeks. They don't really know, of course, until Rev Group tells them, got you in there. I am really hoping that, you know, there might be a unit that is being prepared to be created that's heading to a dealer just to sit on a lot. It's not assigned to a customer yet that we can maybe cut in there, but I'm not that spoiled and I don't expect to cut a line. So hint, hint, we're super, super excited. So we will update you on the ordering process. And then at the very end, I also, I just want to share like, what is it like? What are the steps to ordering a motorhome when you can't just go in, give them cash and pull it out? We'll share all that with you at the very end and give a little bit of a review for La Mesa and we expect it'll be a great a great experience and we we do have pretty high expectations after after working with Gabe but yeah that's where we're at we're stoked pretty big new chapter thanks for shopping with us yep hope you found this interesting and helpful if you have any questions leave them in the comments below we'll see you in the next video bye guys bye